unbelievable thing I've ever seen. I cannot wait for next year. I think more than, the thing that's worthy of mentioning the most is who's not in this thing. Where's the Bernsteins? Where's the forces? It's truly been an exciting year, Bob Price. Indeed it has. Comp Eliminator Finals, and this is where you're going to see a wild variety of race cars. You get four cylinders, sixes, eight, supercharged, injected. You got little tiny cars, got 42 different classes. Heavily modified engines, handicap start, and you can run these puppies as quickly as you want to the other end of the racetrack. Now it's going to be Steve Ambrose and Todd France. Todd's out of Louisville, Kentucky. That's a look at Steve Ambrose right there. That is the Ambrose, Argenta, and Putman race car. Very strong runner. Finished number five in the NHRA Winston Championship points last year. And a guy that is a former U.S. Nationals champion. Todd France went to the finals down in Virginia earlier this season. So this is a V6 dragster. 262 cubic inches. That's an inline six cylinder they actually have some heads on this believe it or not they were made by alan johnson it's a plenty trick piece steve ambrose won this thing back in 1988 outstanding runner and todd france has never been to the finals at indy before now this is a handicap start only about a one light shot advantage goes to the inline six Great run off the starting line, almost a dead heat. Top man, Todd France, goes 7.59 at 169 to beat Steve Ambrose, and his first national event win comes, where else? The 43rd U.S. Nationals. That is our fourth sportsman winner to pick up his first national event win here today. And that is simply unbelievable. Congratulations to Todd France, and we're going to get set Turn the wick up a little bit. Here come the Federal Mogul Funny Cars. Frank Manzo has been there before. He won this race in 1986. He won it in 1994. Jim Sickles has never won as much as a lottery scratch-off ticket. And Dave Reef, the way this thing's going, we might as well just pencil him in as the winner. Pencil in Jim Sickles? I don't know. They've been riding on a cloud all weekend. Frank Manzo's been having problems. Every time they go down the racetrack, they seem to blow the blower belt off. They can keep it on. No problem. It's all Frank Manzo. Good job, though, Jim Sickles. Steve? Yeah, well, Jim Sickles, remember, has a secret weapon. He's called Tom Anderson, but I don't think that will be enough to get around Frank Manzo. Manzo has been in so many winner's circles, so many final rounds, and even though he's a real excitable kind of guy, for some reason, when he three stages, he becomes as calm as anybody you've ever known. Tom Anderson went to the finals at India in 1983, lost to Kenny Bernstein in the fuel category. Jim Sickles has something on his side, boys. It's fate. I said it yesterday in the finals of the Big Bud Shootout. Four first-time winners so far. I'm telling you, fate is riding on the side of Jim Sickles. Frank Manzo, the Kendall GT1 car. John played his crew chief, his wife Michelle, as good as they come, but fate is riding in the near lane. All right, so fate never met up with Frank Manzo. 583, check this out. Jim Sickles quicker at 581. He was nine hundredths slower on the starting line. Frank Manzo shows why he is a two-time federal mogul champion. You can see that visual move out of the gate. 583, 250 beats Jim Sickles. 581, 243, it really wasn't close at the other end. So Manzo in 86, Manzo in 94, Manzo in 97, and John Glade and the rest of the Kendo gang goes wild out of New Jersey. The guy they call the ace deals out a winning hand today. Steve? Ah, uh, he is hooting, he is hollering, he is dancing, jiving, and shucking. Frank Manzo, experience won that one, my man. You ran slower, but you got there first, and that's all that really matters. The man from New Jersey, I may have to talk to him with his helmet on. Hey, Frank, congratulations, pal. Well, who worked really hard this weekend is Kendall. 
Super winch, Mopar performance, Winnebago. I mean, all weekend we had trouble. Blow our belts off it again. He was shaking a little bit. Like my father told me, if you want something bad enough, you've got to go take it. Not wait for it to happen. That's what I did. And that quick right foot put him in the U.S. Nationals winner's circle. Stay with us, everybody. When we come back, we're going to pick up the pace a little bit more. The long, skinny things called federal mogul alcohol dragsters. Welcome. It's the federal mogul dragsters coming up as all 170 Brazilian folks are on hand here today. Whole pile of folks. A couple of little ones and folks that have been here almost as long as Steve Evans. Look at that scoop, would you? I know they call it a hood scoop. They'll dial up that usnationals.com and say it's not a hood scoop. Look at that helmet. That's Darren Russell. Cypress, Texas. Hey, the Cowboys did well yesterday. But another win for Texas here today. Steve, it's got to be kind of neat to sit down there and talk to a guy like Frank Manzo, huh? It is always fun. I haven't had an opportunity to visit their home in New Jersey and meet his family and eat their homegrown tomatoes, and they're just a wonderful bunch, warm, fuzzy people, my favorite kind. Right here, I, I really like Daryl Russell. How about you, Dave Reed? I don't know. It's a toss-up. You've got a blown car, got an injected car. Both have taken out some pretty good competition. Both have been consistent all day, but i I got to agree. It's got to go to the blown alcohol car for Daryl Russell. Rich McPhillips was terrible on the burnout. Of course, you never can tell what those injected cars are going to do. Russell beat Frank Pendragon, Mike Austin, and another injected car, Ken Zeal, the number one qualifier. McPhillips beat Riker and Kona and Rick Santos. The injected car hits on all eight. This could be fun. back 562 248 miles an hour he had a 420 light almost perfect 608 mcphillips the injected cars when they're on they're tough when they're not they're slow 608 195 and change maybe that short burnout was a precursor of things to come and daryl russell picks up the win 562 248 miles an hour and mcphillips not even in the frame at the end of the racetrack. So to Chris and the entire Russell family, congratulations. They won their first race back in Atlanta a couple of years ago. Been to the finals now four times here in 1997. And the crowd goes wild for Daryl Russell. Great job for Daryl and congratulations to he and Frank Manzo, the guy they call the ace, named after his dad, by the way. The far end, all the eyes of Texas are on Daryl Russell and Steve Evans. Uh, let's just put them all on Daryl Russell. He's the man that deserves it. A 66, you just train linked him, you leapt on him. You did everything right at the U.S. Nationals. That's the way to do it. I can't, I don't know what to say. This is something that we all race for all our lives, all our careers to do something like this to win at Indy. There's nothing better than this. Someday you'd like to go top fuel racing? I thought about it before. Just have to wait and see what happens, huh? That is not good news for the fuel troops, as you well know, Bob Fry. When these guys go fuel racing, they catch on way too quick. Yes, indeed. Just nice kids. Uh, both he and his brother, they do a wonderful job.